In the introduction to the Sage 300 People system training, we show how to access the system, general navigation of the screens, and explain the screen layout and terminology. The entity concept is explained to the client. Although there may be many employee records per person, there can only be one entity record per employee. The entity record can simply be linked to multiple employee records. Both an employee record and an entity record is required for each person employed. Employee record contains company specific information such as dates, for example the date of engagement and leave cycle start date, tax status, company rule, leave policy, ETI information and remuneration structure, for example a basic salary or cost to company structure. Entity record contains the basic information of an employee that will always stay the same irrespective of where the employee is employed. The employee record contains employment specific information. We show how to add employee information and change existing employee information. New employees are loaded with employee photos as well as recruits. A recruit is a possible candidate for employment at the company. If the recruit is a successful candidate, the recruit can be employed and will become an active employee. The Sage 300 People system allows you to add a recruit in order to record the applicants for employment, calculate the sample payslip for successful candidates in order to generate an offer of employment, and employ the applicant once the recruit has accepted the offer. A terminated employee is reinstated by following the reinstate employee checklist. Memos are added in the system to remind users of certain events. We then finish off by printing basic reports. Before attending job profile management, either the Sage 300 People Basic Part 1 training or the introduction to the Sage 300 People system must be attended. In job profile management, we look at a sample job description to determine how to set up codes for positions in the system as well as what type of information on the job description to load on the position. A position enables a user to set up a job description on the system. Normally a position contains the job title, job grade, the function, and also it specifies what competencies and key performance is needed on this position. You can also specify the qualifications needed for this position and you can indicate if the qualifications are essential for the position or not. Any affiliations and membership that this position belongs to you can set up the experience needed by this position the training that somebody in this position needs to have, the skills that someone will need to be successful in this position. Some positions have standard items that should be issued to them. Take for example a consultant. A consultant will always need a laptop. Remuneration components. You can specify what salary bracket this position has to have, as well as what is the market minimum, middle and maximum. By setting up the reports to, you indicate the manager of this position and that will also enable you to pull a report that shows the organogram of the company. Succession management. If a payroll officer needs to move through a certain amount of position before they can become, for example, a payroll manager, you can indicate what their career path must be on the succession planning. In Sage 300 People, Job Profile Management is an add-on module, which means that not all clients have Job Profile Management. 
We show how to link employees to positions as well as moving an employee from one position to another. Position information can be updated in bulk by using the position update wizard. The Sage 300 People Personnel Management Training is for users who want to manage the electronic employee file more effectively. The personnel management module provides for functionality that records information that you would typically find in a paper-based employee file. These transactions will encapsulate most of the interactions with the employee and keep track of these interactions for future references. Documents can either be attached per employee record or linked to a specific employee transaction. Transactions is the bulk of personnel management. Any affiliation or membership that an employee belongs to, for example, an accountant belongs to SICA or the employee belongs to a union. This information is added on the affiliation and memberships transaction. Accidents and fines. If the employee drives with a company car and they were speeding, you can load a fine on the employee record. Accidents and fines can also be used for any other type of fine that the employee receives at the company. Disciplinary. A disciplinary case with incidents can be added to the system. The client can set up their disciplinary process steps to follow. Witnesses can be added with the allegations that were made. Discussions are used for any type of discussion that need to be recorded. For example, an exit interview, performance discussion, probation discussion, and so on. Experience that the employee has can be recorded. The general transaction can be used for any additional transaction not catered for on the system. Items issued. This is used to keep track of what has been issued to the employee and when they should return it. For example, a laptop. Medical transactions. Some companies need to do annual checkups or routine medicals. The information can be recorded and reminders set up to inform HR that they are due for another medical. OID. Occupational injuries and diseases information may be recorded. Prior learning can be recorded if the employee is recognized for prior learning. Qualification. The employee's qualification must be loaded on the employee's record. You can also indicate which is the highest qualifications. Training the employee attendant can be recorded and employees can also request to go on training by logging into WebSS. Vehicles. Company vehicle information can be recorded. The Sage 300 People Performance Management course will be updated and ready to sell from March 2019. New features will be explained in this overview. Therefore, if you are unsure of what the training is covering until March 2019, please feel free to contact me. In the performance management training, we load new performance codes or criteria. This includes key performance areas, indicators and sub-indicators, competency areas, competencies and sub-competencies. Additional fields that can be customized to clients' own descriptions. These fields include additional comment, behavioral indicators, evidence, measurement, strategic objective, and target type. Clients can set up lists to choose from, or they can make it comment fields so that they can input their own information. Remember that all these fields are completely customizable to what the client needs. Nothing is set in stone. We set up the structures of the performance reviews, competency reviews, company value reviews, and also free text setups. Free text setups can be used to monitor performance as goals, like we have in Sage. We create rating scales with images, colors, decimals, and different rounding increments. 
We then move over to WebSS once the coding is completed to set up performance contracting. This is where the employee and the contract owner agrees on what the employee is going to be rated on. Reviews are completed in WebSS and review results can be tracked. Lastly, we look at the performance reports that management can use. In the employment equity training, we look at the theory of employment equity as well as what information must be completed on the system to generate the information on the EA2 and EA4 report to submit to the Department of Labor. Manual submission of employment equity reports must be completed by the first working day of October. Online submissions of employment equity reports must be done not later than 15 January. You need to submit two reports for the skills year. The annual training report reflects the number of employees who attended actual training for the previous skills year. The Workplace Skills Plan reflects the number of employees for whom training has been planned for the forthcoming skills year. Both of these reports need to be submitted 30 April every year. Depending on the client's theatre, reporting periods are either from April to March or Jan to December.